Hey everybody, so I'm having the best fall garden I've had in a really long time and I just want to show you guys what I got going on. Some things are really, really, really good and some things are not as good, but you got to take the good with the bad. So today we're going to do a little garden tour and I'm just going to walk you around my garden and show you what's going on in this fall and um, I'm super pleased with it and maybe I can share some tips about how I got my garden to be this happy this fall. So uh, come on, let's go check it out. Tavia and I just did a podcast episode and we were talking about our fall gardens for what's going on in November and we had a really good conversation and I was really just kind of talking about my fall garden and it just occurred to me that this is a really good year. So if you can see in this bed here, all of my radishes here, I have three different kinds of radishes going. So here I have my champion radish. I have French breakfast radish, and then if I come all the way over here, I believe they're either watermelon or uh, red meat radishes right here. And I, I mean, they're just, they're plumping up, they're getting really good. Some of them got a little bit warm, so they're kind of spicy. And when I say spicy, I mean spicy. But this right here is a yadfa. And it's supposed to be like a broccoli asparagus flavor. So I'm not really sure how it's going to end up. But it is definitely getting happy with this weather that we're having. You know, it's just starting to get cool. And this is my Tuscana kale. Or Tuscan kale, I believe. Maybe I've been saying it wrong all this time. And I usually do curly kale. And this year it was on the chopping block. I wasn't going to grow anymore. Tried this variety and I've uh, been very happy with it. And if you just take a step back and look at this bed, if I just walk kind of like this, look at all the different textures that are going on. You know, we've got low, we've got some high bushy, we've got some nice plumpness right here. It's just, it's so pretty and happy. Now, I mean, the blaring issue right here is my chard and it is not doing well. But that's not the end of the world. You know, I still have time I can put something else in its spot and I'll probably drop some turnips in there. But this bed I've actually prepared to make a low tunnel over. So I'll be doing a video on that soon. But this is two kinds of lettuce too. This is Paris Romaine. And this is a little gem lettuce. And so you can see there's a big difference in the two. And I mean just so thrilled about especially this one bed which I didn't think was going to be my top performer but so far so good and if we come over here we have a couple more radishes you know we have some more French breakfast radishes and I know that I've gone heavy on them but that is because I want to I love cooking them they're so good and I can get so many in this small space so each one of these are coming in at different rates so I'll have a prolonged harvest. But here's some more of that Yad Fa right here. So you can see just if we step back again, the different textures we have. It's just, it's amazing. And then here we have a couple cabbages. I say a couple, but it's actually quite a bit. And I mean, just looking at the cabbages, they usually don't start to head up for me until about late November. And then they'll actually slow down and pick back up in the spring. So that's a long-term game. But this is my trellis, obviously. And you can see that I've got some peas going down here. So they're getting started. Hopefully they'll kind of take off. They've been kind of slow on the uptake. And on the other side here, here's some more. So I wanted to get these a good start on this side so they wouldn't get overshadowed because I kind of did my planning wrong this year and had that. But this is all, this whole trellis here has just been a learning process for me. So if I can get this side going first and get it up, then this side catch up, then I should be okay on the sun. And as the leaves fall, then I'll get more and more light in here. But if we come to this back bed again, you know, we've got some kohlrabi just coming up in the back here you can barely see it but it's coming up a couple more uh, radishes I think these are red meat radishes as well and then our broccoli 
So broccoli is actually doing pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. It is not heading up yet, which is giving me a little bit of anxiety, but at the same time, I'm okay with it because it's just now starting to cool off. So that means it's gonna head up more and more. And my Brussels sprouts, you know what? It's the same story as last year, but they seem to be doing better. They're just not getting very tall. So I need to work on that a little bit. But again, they can take, all of this can take cold weather, so I'm not overly concerned. I mean, the cooler it gets, the happier it gets. These are actually some turnips that I've got going, so they will start to form their turnip eventually. And this bed got a little overcrowded, but as I pull stuff out, things will get happier and happier. So we just kind of work with what we got. Um, my black eyed peas are finishing up and then underneath if you can see right there we've got peas coming up underneath it so that will come up and then we come over here I already harvested all of my kohlrabi except for this one which is just kind of not really forming the what we're going to call the root but I'm just going to leave it because I like it but, you know, we've got this green kohlrabi here, and then we've got some seedlings coming in that I just replanted not too long ago. So my first frost should be in about two to three weeks, so hopefully they'll get some size to them. And then they can finish up. Then this back row here, this is all rutabaga. So they'll grow through the winter here for the most part. And then we've got our kohlrabi back here, which is coming up and it's gonna get nice and plump I mean it's been doing really good this year so we've had a lot of different a lot of successes so far I've already harvested some of the kohlrabi like I said then I came in here and added a little bit more kohlrabi so as that grows in we should have more so back here is my nice dandelion patch and I have zero plans for that, just need to weed it. But I just figured I'd point that out that you know what, I'm just letting this section just be the section. It's gonna live its best life. And then this is an old eggplant I have and I'm actually letting everything go to seed. So as they come in and get bigger and bigger, we're just gonna let them and then by the first frost we'll harvest them and we'll have some kohlrabi. And then back here, this was the new bed for this year. And if we walk around it, and if we walk around it, you can see like the collards are finally starting to take off. It really took some cool weather in order for it to happen. Uh, my parsnips are coming up, but something last night came and dug. So I've got to figure out what's going on there. I can't really tell if I could see a paw print I could tell you it looks like it may have been a raccoon I don't know if you can see there's a scratch mark here and the way it looks it looks like there is a it's a raccoon so that's something I may have to deal with but they come and go kind of infrequent the carrots here I'm gonna replant another row of them another patch just to let them go for the winter but they came i planted them in the heat and they didn't really do so well because they don't like to germinate in heat so that's been kind of an issue but i'm not overly concerned like i said if i plant them now by spring they should start to get some good growth uh this kohlrabi here so this kohlrabi's taken off and i need to trim that back because it's overshading now this is interesting this is a jalapeno didn't do much all year but let me show you what it's doing now look at that just full absolutely full of peppers I mean look at that so I'm just gonna let that go and then I'll finally get to can some peppers for this year patience has been key on this you know, we have some more cabbages here. So we have a little bit of eating going on, which is whatever. I'm not overly concerned about that either. Um, it'll come back and if it doesn't, then there'll just be empty space for the year. 
And then we have some more peas back here. This bed right here gets a lot of shade this time of year, so I'm not expecting a whole lot out of it. But as we keep going, you know, we'll see what happens. Again, if we look up here, as these leaves fall, especially this tree right here, we will get more sun into this section. And so that's going to be really key for this. And I did the uh, video on my pots, but just to give you a little update, everything is looking nice. I have, I have my um, basil here, so I'm waiting. I'll probably just clip this all and make another batch of um, pesto. And I actually have another basil plant right here that when I started it, it fell over and I just left it. So that's going to be enough to get basil in itself or pesto. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, just less work for me. Again, not heading up over here, but we are getting lots of good, healthy growth. And it looks like we may be starting to head up, maybe. But again, another pepper. Just, I believe this is a Sir Purple pepper. So you can find it on Instagram. Um, he makes his own peppers and this, this bad boy is hot. But I'm going to let those go and try and save those seeds. And if we come over here, this is my cauliflower patch. These seedlings are really young. And this section has been really hard for me to water this year. So letting it grow, we're supposed to get some rain tonight. So hopefully that'll help. And then I can come back and water it when my rain barrels fill back up. But they're growing. I mean, they're not looking too hurt too much. There's a little bit of water issues, but like I said, I can fix that. So it's been really good so far. So the next section, I always have high hopes for the wild garden. And I'm, I made the declaration on the podcast and I'm going to do it. I'm going to make changes to it. So let's go talk about that. And there's going to be a lot more updates on the wild garden because I have high hopes for it. And it's time for me to make it happen because it can double my production for the year. So let's check that out. So the wild garden here, this garden was designed to just let things grow wild. And it does do that, but it has issues. And the issue comes with the soil, but... Let's not worry about that right now. Let's just see what's in here. Um, I do have a lot of little kohlrabi seedlings and turnips that are growing. And I can already see there's a, some kind of nutrient issue. Looks like nitrogen, so I'll add some to it. But you can see that it's all ready. And I'll probably come back through and thin these. But when I thin them, I'm going to separate them and replant some of them. And it actually works pretty well for me. I uh, get bug issues back here on the chard, but you know, I'm not hung up on the chard right now. That's more of a summertime game for me, it seems like. I do have a little itty bitty melon down here. I've got to be careful to step on, not step on anything. And if you can see the melon, that is never going to make it. So I'm probably going to pull it, but you know what, maybe I'll leave it and see what happens. I'm kind of hanging up on this for right now until I can fix my issues. And what I want to do is build a frame and then make raised beds here. Still going to be a wild garden, still going to have the same purpose, but I will be able to control the soil because what's going on is the soil is very, it has a lot of drainage. And so I'm having a lot of issues with water, as you can see right here like it just some of the plants that just don't get the water that they need and it could be a nutrient issue not allowing the roots to suck up the water so i need to just kind of fix that i've put in a lot of compost and stuff but i think just redoing it this winter and starting over fresh where i know what soil goes in is going to be the key and that's going to be just clutch to make this a much more productive area so I'm not overly concerned about this part, but the main garden is just amazing. What I think led to some success for this year, and do take note of this, is starting early. So when I didn't think it was time to start, I started. And things really got a good, they got a foothold, they got going really well. And I watered a lot. Like, I mean, honestly, because I was doing a lot of direct sowing, I was watering almost every day. And I would do short waterings to keep the seeds moist. And it did cause some issues, but I did happen to see 
that things would grow a lot faster and a lot stronger and I fertilized early and often and it's time for me to give one more feeding before the winter comes and then you know in a couple weeks that organic fertilizer will start to break down and feed all of these plants behind me and then that's just going to be you know timing 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 and feeding 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 watering 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 that's all going to be a big part of it now the other thing is since i got it in so early and it stays shady here until about midday it helps keep the heat down on it because none of these plants like heat so as we get closer to the fall i'm not worried about it i'm not worried about the fall at all i'm not worried about the cold weather I'm not worried about you know this frost coming because all these plants like a little bit of frost and when they get kissed by frost they supposedly get sweeter so it's it's very relaxing and I'm not trying to hold on to my tomatoes you know I do have my jalapenos growing first frost coming I'll cut them it's no big deal there's plenty of peppers on there uh, I hate that I had to wait until October to get them but I got them so you know it's just timing and spacing but basically I just started earlier and I watered a lot and I keep watering and now that it's getting cooler I'm cutting back more and more on the watering and I'm taking into account the rain and all that I'm gonna give it a dose of fish fertilizer and I'm gonna give it some organic fertilizer to put in I'll probably use some um, alfalfa meal and then a regular 10 10 10 on top of it and then I'll probably sprinkle a little bit of bone meal on top and then that will kind of give it enough to kind of get it through, feed the soil and the microorganisms that are inside. And then really give my soil a boost because the majority of these beds, once I pull out, I'm going to be done because I have the greenhouse and I'll have the low tunnel. And anything else that lives, lives and anything else that's empty is empty because at this point it's getting too late. So just remember that. But um, I just wanted to show you guys what I did. Thank you so much. It's, it's been a great fall. And I'm so thrilled that when I look at my garden, I see the textures, I see the fullness, I see the vibrancy, and it's been really awesome. So um, let me know in the comments how your fall gardens are going. Let us know how you're doing. I would love to know, I'd love to know what you're having success with and also what you're failing at because we have to acknowledge our failures. That's really important. So everybody take care and uh, we'll see you next time and check out the Backyard Gardens podcast, especially that update that we have coming out. It'll be the first week in November. Uh, well, the same day you're seeing this, more than likely. So uh, check that out because it's a really good conversation we had. And uh, you guys take care. See ya.